So let's start with adoption, about how you can adopt um, Go in your company and um, see what uh, Go can help you with. And I'm going to start with the history. And the reason I'm starting with the history is because history actually affects the way we write code now and also uh, how the future looks like with Go. So Go started at Google uh, and it is being backed by Google. And Google, um, you know, every time you adopt a new technology, you're doing some kind of a bet. You don't know if it's going to be here in five, 10 years. Uh, you're not sure about uh, how much is going to get updated and everything else. Because Go is developed in Google and used by Google, um, th there's a good chance that it's going to stay around for us. Uh, another point in history that is actually affecting us are the three people who started Go, which are Grismeyer, Pike, and, and Thompson. Um, Pike and Thompson, um, you can Google them. They've been around uh, early days of Unix, um, uh, authors uh, of a UTF-8 uh, encoding scheme, uh, and many, many other things. Uh, Griesmeyer, uh, a bit younger, but still worked a lot of time on the V8 engine, which is what runs the JavaScript in both uh, Node.js and Chrome. Uh, so they came in very seasoned to the language. Uh, I came from Python, and in Python, Guido, who started Python, uh, is on the record saying, when I was young and started Python, I was saying yes too much, and now I'm stuck with things. And th these guys know it. So they say yes is staying us forever, especially in programming languages. So um, the language is simple. Simplicity is one of the things that is engraved in the language. Uh, I, if you're new to Go and you're starting writing stuff in Go and you're coming from a language like me, for example, uh, such as Python, you're going to miss a lot of things. Uh, but in the long run, you're going to see that this is actually good. We spend most of our time reading code and reading simple code is easier. Excuse me, spring allergies. It will come. Okay. Um, the second thing is Go is open source. It was open sourced in 2009, which means that you can grab the sources and do with them what you want, even if for some reason Google decides not to support Go anymore. Go is written in Go. So if you know Go, uh, you can probably maintain some of it. Some parts are written in assembly and really connected to the operating system, so they get trickier, but most of the libraries are written in um, just in Go. And last but not least, version one came on 2012. Version one came with a compatibility promise. The Go team says, Go one is going to be backward compatible. You can write code or rewrite library uh, in Go 1.1. Uh, now we're at 120. This is still going to work. Uh, for me, coming from Python, uh, we had the transition from Python 2 to Python 3. It was long and painful road. This compatibility promise is great. Even when we got generics, which was a big change to the language in 118, it is still in a backward compatible way. And it's still working. And the Go team uh, is pretty much saying there's not going to be a Go team. So looking into the future, uh, every language needs a killer application. And for Go, it was Docker and Kubernetes. Once Docker and Kubernetes, the infrastructure was written in Go, you have a really healthy ecosystem with a lot of users, a lot of companies are running uh, on Kubernetes. So Go is here to stay, probably, right? Uh, as Yogi Berra said, predict it, prediction is hard, especially about the future. So um, again, it's a bet, but it's a pretty safe bet uh, that Go is here to stay. Go is adopted by many big companies. Uh, AT&T, Google, Microsoft, and Netflix, and many, many, many more are using Go inside in critical projects, not just toy projects for uh, one or team. So uh, it is here. Uh, and I'm seeing it as a, as a person who organized the community. I see a lot more companies coming into Go in the last uh, five years and replacing services and agents and many other things. 
Uh, Goes which the respectable number 10 position in the TIOBE index. Um, so it's one of the 10 most popular languages uh, used these days, uh, which means that there's a lot of people using it, a lot of developers uh, familiar with it. And the Go team is uh, working all the time to make Go even better for the community and for the companies who are using it. Both the community and in the latest years, they are uh, placing a focus also on the enterprise and see how uh, make it better. There's a link here to how Go became its best self from GopherCon Europe. It's, a, it's an interesting look at the Go team and how they actually always query the community, always looking for how to improve and doing a lot of informed decision and this way. When we talk about adoption, the language is easy to learn, right? Um, I took a look at the, the spec of Go um, and printed it out, it's 75 pages. If you look at Python, it's 185. And if you go to C++, it's 1800 and a bit. So Go is a small language, meaning uh, when your team is going to learn Go, they don't have a lot to learn. There's less language to learn, which is really nice. And also the syntax is based on C. This is something that most of developers are familiar because in these um, C-based languages, you can find Java and C-sharp and, uh, and, and many others that uh, are what most developers are working with right now. One of the things that you want to, uh, when you get a language is to know that your developers will be able to work with it, uh, to use to use it in the existing tools. Uh, so for IDE, IDE Integrated Development Environment, the two big ones in the Go world are uh, Visual Studio Code, which comes from Microsoft, has a Go extension maintained by the Go team at Google. Um, and this is when we do the surveys, uh, when the Go team does the surveys of uh, for the Go community, the yearly survey, this comes out first always. A, because it's a great ID, really, it's a really good one. And second, because it's free. Uh, the second one is Goland. Goland comes from JetBrains, who do IntelliJ, uh, WebStorm, PyCharm, and others. They know how to do uh, IDs. It's also a great ID. Uh, this one is not free. And then if you're using any other IDs, uh, I'm old, so I'm using Vim most of the time. Uh, there is uh, um, support for that as well. There is a, a debugger for the language. It's called Dell. Uh, it is uh, very, uh, it's been ported to most uh, architectures, some of them that you never heard about, uh, some kind of chips from uh, um, IBMs and others. Uh, it can do remote debugging. You can actually debug your uh, code running on a pod container inside the Kubernetes cluster. It can do that for you as well. Uh, there's built-in documentation. So there is a built-in documentation tool, uh, which is similar to the one that you find on the web for the Go documentation called uh, pgg.code.dev, but you can run it locally. There are ways, established ways of how you write documentation, how you document functions, how you document uh, modules, uh, the, there is like a markdown language uh, and it's it's a really nice thing. And also you get testable examples in as documentation, meaning that you have documentation that runs as part of the testing. And if you change the code and you forgot to update the documentation, you're going to get notified. There are a lot of static checkers, uh, linters as we call them, uh, static check, uh, go stack and many, many more that uh, will help you, um, especially people who are new to Go, they highlight a lot of things that you might be doing. Uh, if you want Go to work with your existing ecosystem, so right, entering uh, or adding a new language to organization, it's not just saying, hey, team, go use uh, Go and, and that's it. No, you need to connect to databases, to monitoring tools, to do logging in the right format. You need to do a lot of other things. And when it comes to that, Go has a really healthy ecosystem. So almost every database you can think of, you will find a package that does it. Uh, if you want to connect to monitoring from Prometheus to uh, others, uh, um, open telemetry, you name it, Go has it. 
really. Uh, and the last thing, uh, import C, uh, Go has uh, a nice connection to, an easy connection to existing C libraries or C++ library, which means if you have an existing code base that is written in C, you don't need to rewrite everything. Eventually the recommendation is yes, do it because uh, uh, you're going to lose some of the power of Go, and which we'll talk about later. But um, at the beginning, at uh, the adoption state, you can just import uh, your C code and start using it from Go like you're importing a Go package. Give or take the types and some garbage collection, you should be good. And there are a lot of learning resources. Us, of course, right? Um, uh, in, in the Go site, you can find tool.go.dev, right? So go.dev is the website for the Go programming language. Uh, you can do a, a full tour there without installing anything. Just from your browser, you can, you can learn Go. Uh, the name of the language is Go, by the way, but when we Google it or query it, uh, Go is not a good word, so we say Golang. But the name of the language is Go. Uh, there is a document called Effective Go. This is one of the best... Uh, extended cheat sheets that, that I know for a language. It's really precise. Uh, you can go, so I need to do a follow-up. I need to do a switch statement. Everything is there, um, showing it in a very idiomatic uh, Go code, which is really, really nice. Uh, there are many books and videos. Uh, there are conferences. Uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, European one is in uh, end of June. Uh, United Kingdom, August, and the United States in San Diego this year is in October. So uh, you can go there. Uh, we're still waiting for Hawaii, right? To start a meetup, a uh, GoFrica, but maybe we'll do it one day. Uh, and there are local meetups, many, many local meetups. If you go to meetup.com, there's the Go Developer Network. You can see uh, all of the meetups uh, and find one that is close to you. There's a lot of emphasis in the Go community about being nice. I've seen people kicked out from online forums because they were not nice, even if they were contributing a lot of knowledge. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, emphasis on, on that as well. Uh, 